In this video I want to show how to configure the super directory command, uh, the sd command. I'm doing this after a previous video showing a, uh, a number of great alternatives to the standard CPM DIR command in which I show a super directory being used. Uh, the reason I want to configure sd is that by default it's only configured for two drives with 16 users uh, user areas been able to be accessed on those drives and, uh, and it doesn't come configured for the terminal that I'm using which is the VT100 terminal. So uh, I've extracted the .asm file, you can see it there, uh, from the LBR file and the first problem we come up against is that it's 119k. Uh, well, I'm running this on a uh, on a disk that only has 36k free so there's not going to be enough room if I edit that file for the .bac file that um, that Ed will create. So I'm going to copy that file over to the user2 area of my iDrive. My iDrive is my 4 meg hard drive so there's plenty of space for that. So I'll copy that to i2 and that will go through and that will copy and that will take quite a while because it's a big file. Because I'm using a CPM 2.2 system I also come against the problem that uh, CPM 2.2 has that it's quite awkward to run files between users. There are ways around this but the, uh, the most obvious answer is to copy the files that I need into the uh, i2 area. So I'm going to copy asm.com, I'm going to copy load.com and I also want to use ed. So I'll tag those three files and then I'll copy them to my i2 drive and then they'll all be accessible then from that, from that user on the I drive. Uh, so now if I go onto the I2 drive, and I can see that I have my files there, asm, ed, load, the com files, and uh, the uh, sd138b asm file. I come out of disk 7 now. Uh, disk 7, if you haven't used it, is a great utility. I've done another video on that, uh, about uh, interactive file managers on CPM and uh, that shows disk 7 being used in some more detail but it's uh, definitely worth checking out. So uh, if I go on to user 2 of the I drive and there we are we can see that we have our three files. Right we're all ready now to edit the uh, the ASM file so we'll use ed to do that. We'll load in 500 lines that should be enough. Uh, I really like Ed, most people don't seem to, but uh, I think it's just really well suited to the CPM environment, uh, particularly as it's uh, pretty terminal independent and um, and it, it works well with the uh, uh, the low memory usage that we have, uh, or at least the low memory uh, capacity that, uh, that uh, CPM normally runs in. So if I Have a look through and there we are we can see that we're using SD138 and it's the 20th of August 89 that it was released and then there's some information about the various systems that it can be used on and um, and it can be configured for Z80 DOS, uh, ZCPR and also has some options which are useful on our CPM. So we'll go through and tell us a little bit more about uh, what can be configured and uh, what it can do. And we want to alter the the drive user lookup table. So we'll uh, go through that. And there we are. So uh, we can see near the top of the screen line 142, 143 
those are our A and B drives, and they're the only ones that are configured at the moment. And they can use up to user area 15 in both of those. Uh, if we wanted to use more than the more than the 15 user area, say if we were running a CPM3 system, then we could change that to 31, which would allow the which would allow up to the maximum 32 user areas for a CPM3 system. For the moment, I want to add a few extra drives because I have drives uh, as well as A, B. I also have C, D, and I. So I'm going to add those by going to line 151. And then I'm going to take seven lines and store them to a temporary file. So I'm going to delete those seven lines. And then I'm going to go to line 144. 44. So there we are. A nice um, uh, example of how you can use multiple commands on an add line. So now if I look uh, on line 144, I'll read in the temporary files that I just created. And then if I go back a few lines, and we'll have a look what we've got. There we are. So I've got my user areas now, uh, uh, sorry, my uh, drives from A to I. Uh, but I still can't access the C, D, or I drive because they're set to 0FF, which indicates they're uh, inaccessible. So I'll first of all go to line 144. And I want to substitute the 0FFH that we have there for uh, 15. And then, so we use S, 0FFH. So substitute 0FFH, and then Control z indicates the end of the text that we want to substitute. I replace it with 15, and then the Control z ends that command. And then I want to do 0L, which puts me back to the, it puts the cursor back to the beginning of the line, and then retypes that line. So there we are. That's my C drive done. I'll go to the next line and do the same again. And then I'll go down a few more lines. The I drive, do the same again. And there we are. So that's the lines configured. And now I want to uh, go a bit further down. In fact, I might just display that all again. Let's see what we've got. There we are. So we can see A, B, C, D, all using 15 up to 15 up to user area 15, and then the same for drive I. And then if we go a few more lines down, we can see the high drive, which is the indicator uh, that um, uh, that we're at the end of the. Uh, of the list of drives that are accessible. Right, so we'll continue that a little bit further down. The next thing we want to do is alter how the attributes are displayed. So by default, if we are using, say, the system attribute, or a file has the read-only attribute, or the archive attribute, the appropriate letter in the file extension will be made lowercase. But I don't want that in addition to uh, to underlining the character, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'll do that by um, changing that. So line 209, I'm going to substitute a yes or a no. And I'm going to do that for the next one as well. Up. And then the, so that'll mean then uh, it'll just display it with the normal uppercase characters. And then the next thing I want to do is set about uh, altering 
the, the attributes for that. So we'll go down until we find that. You can see some Z80 DOS and Z8, uh, Z, Z3 CPR configuration options that we have. Lots of configurable options in the uh, in Super Directory. Uh, so uh, rev ID equals no at the moment. So I'm going to change that for yes. And there we are. So now it's going to use a different display for uh, for the uh, attributes if we get to them, if we see any. So I'll go down a little bit further. And then we have uline there, so I'll alter that as well. And to yes. And display the line. Good, so that's that done. And then the final bit, a uh, final bit of the configuration at least, is to actually alter the terminal codes that are needed to do that. So uh, it talks about using the reverse character, uh, reverse attribute for uh, displaying attributes, but uh, but I much prefer to use underline, and that's what I'm going to use here. So if I go to line three one four, I'm going to substitute the uh, row of zeros there for the characters, the control sequence which I use for my VT100 terminal. So we're going to want BH, that's uh, the escape character. There we are. And I'll also make a mention that uh, in actual fact I'm using reverse, uh, underline, sorry, not reverse. So I'll substitute reverse for underline. There we are. And then if I do a few more characters, I get to RV off. So this is where it turns the attribute off again. So I'll substitute that for This time we use the zero display type, display attribute. And I'll again alter exit reverse to exit U line. There. And then the last bit. is to uh, control the, the banner line, uh, the title bar. Uh, so it suggests underline, but I prefer to make it bright. So I'll do that by substituting again for escape And then substitute where it says U line or bright. There we are. And then the next one is uh, turning it back to uh, the normal display mode for this terminal. And then there we are. Let's just have a look at this all. So we've got um, reverse on, which is really enter uh, underline, reverse off, and then go down a little bit. Uh, again, um, underline on, which is really enter bright mode, and then 
uh, exit bright mode. So, uh, so that's all uh, that's all configured. So we'll exit out of Ed, and then we'll save the file to the disk. Right now that uh, now that that's saved, I'm going to switch to the user zero area because I want to show the size of the back file. So you can see that the back file is 120k, uh, and that really demonstrates why I couldn't put it on that D drive. Uh, so we're ready now. We'll switch back to user zero. Uh, so I'll switch back to user two. And we'll assemble the uh, SD138B file. And uh, this will take quite a long time. Uh, but it'll create an Intel style hex, uh, an Intel format hex file, uh, which we can then create a compile out of using the load command. Right, so that's finished. So we now have the uh, .hex file, which we're going to create a com file out of using the load command. And now if I run that, we can see that we've got the, uh, the highlighted bar that I like. And if I uh, look the various disks that I have. You can see that it's uh, accessing the C drive uh, that uh, we told it to, uh, we made available to it, D drive, and you've already seen the I drive, uh, user 2 on the I drive. Uh, so um, the other thing I want to show is uh, the, the highlighting of the attributes. So if I switch to user zero, and if I go into my D drive, I'll make the ASM file read only. Like that. And then if I go back to user two, I drive, we can see that the A is highlighted to indicate that the file is read-only. So, uh, yep. Yeah, so that proves that that's configured properly. Uh, as you can see, nice and easy to do. Uh, again, if you want to have a look at the um, super directory command in more depth, have a look at the other video I did about uh, DIR alternatives on uh, CPM. And um, hopefully, you found this video useful. So do uh, uh, do have a look at the other CPM videos that we have available on the uh, Tech Tinkering YouTube channel and uh, please subscribe to it and you may also like to have a look at other articles about CPM and vintage computers on the Tech Tinkering website.